Hi, this is Greg Abston from the Laser Training Institute of Professional Medical Education Association. Welcome to our short video series on medical laser training. In this laser lab video, we're going to see how to adjust the spot size of the laser through a micro manipulator on a microscope. This happens to be a colposcope, but it works the same way with any microscope. We'll have a separate video on how to use the uh, handpiece with a freehand CO2 laser to control your spot size so that your power density is just right for vaporizing at any power you set. Um, let's take a look at these micro manipulators up close first so you can get an idea of what you're going to change. The micro manipulators all have uh, some common things between them. How to select the focal length of the lens that will match the microscope objective and then to focus and defocus. On this Sharplin unit, let's zoom in a little bit so you can take a look. The focusing lens itself is removable, so you pop it out. Here's a 300 millimeter lens and here is a 400 that we can put in its place. So the first thing is the, micro, the laser focusing lens must match the objective on the microscope or they're just not going to work well together. This has a continuously variable defocus on the side and you can see that. I just turn it around. The numbers don't mean anything. It's just when you get to the smallest one, that's in focus with the smallest dot. With a 400 millimeter lens on a CO2 laser, that would be about eight tenths of a millimeter spot. And then you gradually defocus it. It's a continuously variable defocus. Uh, this has a a joystick and that can be loosened or tightened and then a hand rest on the side to just make it easier for the surgeon. We're not going to get into how to drape or sterilize these at the moment but just how to use them to set your spot size and then of course the lens reflects this uh, or the mirror reflects this into the surgical field. This unit from Coherent is a little bit different. Uh, it still has a uh, joystick. It does have a place to put a hand rest. It's just not in here right now. Uh, the mount's a little bit different. It has glass with a reflector right in the middle. But where you change this, instead of inserting a um, lens, On this unit, you select your focal length uh, just by moving the barrel here. So there's a 300 millimeter lens, a 400 millimeter lens. Uh, once you set that up, it shouldn't be changed. You should leave it right there. The continuously variable defocus is here. There's the largest spot, and if we bring it back down to um, the one setting, then it's on the smallest spot uh, at that focal length of the lens. Okay, we now have the um, laser arm hooked up to the micro manipulator on the scope. Because I'm using a coposcope uh, in this setup, I have to be able to reach the joystick at the top up here. So the manipulator is actually mounted upside down with a laser beam coming in from the bottom and going up through it. Uh, there are other configurations, surgical laser, it's usually mounted in the horizontal configuration. Okay, what we want to do are to do some test shots on this to set up our spot size. All right, the laser is hooked up. Um, I have it set um, for right now at maximum power on this laser at 60 watts for a tenth of a second timer on a continuous wave beam. I put the tongue blade in water um, just so you don't make a little flame on the tongue blade when you shoot it. And I'm going to do some test shots starting with the most highly focused uh, spot. So I'll get in focus with my eyes through the microscope, which means then that the laser is at the right, um, right at the focal point with the objective lens of the scope. So the laser is set, it's on ready, and I'll fire. That, as I expected, went right through the tongue blade. So I'm going to turn the defocus knob just a little bit and I'll go right below this and do another shot uh, right below. I'm still right through it. A third shot. Ah, now we're starting to make some progress. It didn't penetrate it. Um, it's got a beam shape to it and it's 
I'm getting larger and larger as you can imagine. Um, it's now starting to flatten out a bit. And finally I'll take it all the way up to its largest spot size. Okay, this I can almost use at the largest spot size on it at that 60 watts of power. Now that we've found the right spot size for the power we're using, uh, using it at a tenth of a second just because it represents an average hand speed, let me show you how to trade off your pulse width, uh, which is actually a timer on a CW laser. So we're going to do that shot again on the, the spot size that we selected here, uh, 60 watts, one tenth of a second, and we'll make one shot. Okay, that's at the top one. Now I'm going to adjust the laser and take the pulse width down to half of that, 1 20th of a second. The laser is now set at 60 watts and 1 20th of a second, and I'll make the, um, the test shot just below that on the wet tongue blade. Ooh, it cleaned it up. Now let's do that again. This particular laser of coherence will go down to 1 100th of a second. Um, 60 watts at 1 100th of a second, which is 10 milliseconds, we'll place the third shot right underneath there. You can barely even see a mark. Let's do it one more time just so that uh, we leave something to be seen here. With that wet tongue blade, I'm not even making a mark at a 1 100th of a second. I'm going to put it on the dry side for a second just to show you. Barely made a mark. The point of this with trading off the uh, pulse width is that you can use the high power because that's clean. That gives you a high power density which makes it clean. Your objective is to control it. You don't want it to do anything. So in this case you control it by the pulse width. You take the pulse width down and that gives you exquisite control over what it does and it's very clean. It does not uh, transmit heat laterally from the impact site when you work. Okay, let's do this again, but let's look at it close up on the skin of an apple uh, to see how that translates into being clean without uh, charring. So I'm going to place the apple in here. It's set on 60 watts at uh, one tenth of a second. I'm going to place these test shots uh, in a vertical row so that you can compare them. So I'm starting here with a tenth of a second at 60 watts. Now I'm going to take it down to 1 20th of a second. Now remember this is using the same spot that I sat doing those test shots on the tongue blade. So 60 watts at 1 20th of a second, which is still pretty clean. And let's take it all the way back down again. We're now at 60 watts on 1 100th of a second, which is 10 milliseconds. It barely broke the surface of the apple. Now that we have our spot size set up on the uh, micro manipulator on the microscope, um, let's put it in a repeat pulse to see how we would uh, control this. We'll do it in a repeat pulse and then we'll change it to continuous with a foot pedal and uh, look at how the spot size selection we just made allows us to control the beam but yet do a really good job of vaporization. Okay, this is now set at 60 watts of power on a tenth of a second pulse, repeated every three tenths of a second to give you some uh, hand control over this. I've now changed it so that it still has the 60 watts and a tenth of a second pulse, but I'm going to repeat it faster, about a tenth of a second in between each pulse. This time I've dropped my power down to 20 watts of power. 
But in order to have the correct size spot to fit that, I have to have a smaller spot size. So I've already adjusted it so that it's the correct size spot for that power. I have it on a tenth of a second pulse with a tenth of a second uh, off time in between, and it's on repeat. You can see it still does a, a pretty good job. It just does it with a much smaller spot when you do it. Let's use the same 60 watts of, a pa of power. Um, and this time though, we're gonna cut the pulse width in half down to 1 20th of a second. We'll keep the rate the same and see if this cleans it up. When you cut the pulse width in half, it um, is like taking half of a bite each time you do it. Now what would that have looked like if your spot size is too large for the power? Still same setting, 60 watts, uh, 1 20th of a second pulse with 3 tenth, or with 1 tenth in between each pulse. All I'm doing here is burning. Now let's make your worst nightmare come true. We're still at the 60 watts of power on a 20th of a second pulse but this time I've got it down to a very uh, sharp, highly focused spot. Yes, it is a clean vaporization, but it would have perforated, shred, and bled like crazy. The problem was not the power that was set. The problem was simply the combination of power and spot size. Spot size would t was too small for the power set. That's why you have the problems. Otherwise, you can use that full power uh, very well as long as you've got the, broad the spot size broadened. Here's 60 watts of power again, but this time we've taken the timed pulse off and it's now in the continuous foot pedal mode. You have to be much more coordinated to do this. Okay, we're back in 60 watts, continuous foot pedal now. There is no time pulsing on it, so you have to be um, much more um, coordinated. Here I'll just use swirling motions to control the beam a bit, but you can see it's quite fast. That's a clean vaporization, but it could get away from you, which is why the time pulses are excellent to maintain control over that laser beam. Here's what would happen if you did the same thing while the beam is highly focused using the 60 watts uh, continuous wave power. This absolutely shreds uh, and perforates. Okay, so you can see that the key to control of the laser here is to set the spot size um, according to the power you have set. And as long as you have two or three millimeters worth of space to work, there's a significant advantage to using it at, at its highest power because it's the cleanest. Um, if you need to work with much smaller spots, uh, below two and three millimeters, then you can turn the power down. But here you can see, for each power you select, you need to select the spot size that gives you the correct beam shape with it. That gives you control over the laser so it doesn't get away from you, but yet it's a clean vaporization that does not uh, burn and carbonize things as it goes along.